The movie starts by introducing Thomas, a village boy raised in a decent family but surrounded by a gangster atmosphere. Consequently, he develops distinct characteristics from his family. Additionally, he also enjoys for brawls, leading school authorities to frequently contact his father, who can only apologize for his son's behavior. Despite repeated warnings, Thomas's mischievous activities extend beyond fights. He often borrows his father's taxi to cruise around the city with his friends. One night, he encounters a gang of thugs with women, sparking his fascination and desire to become a gangster. After seven years, Thomas has become a teenager. When his house is empty, he invites a woman over, and they begin to intimate. He then convinces her to enter into a business dealing with illegal goods, and she readily accepts. Their business proves highly profitable, earning Thomas considerable wealth at a young age. He even garners clients from diverse backgrounds. As part of his commission, he sneaks into his father's room in the middle of the night and secretly slips the money he earned into it. However, unbeknownst to him, his father has begun to harbor suspicions about his son's activities. One night, Thomas is involved in an incident where he's assaulting a man. His father unexpectedly interrupts, and Thomas, fearing being caught, lies that the man had harmed his friend. Surprisingly, his father believes him and offers to accompany the woman. While his father is away, Thomas notices a briefcase containing a substantial amount of money and seizes the opportunity to take it. However, the man's associates corner him. Eventually, Thomas pretends to return the briefcase, but instead attacks them all. Afterward, he looks towards the bridge, where a boy is watching his brutality, seemingly sharing his ruthless nature. Twelve years later, in 1996, Thomas has gained even more famous and rises to become the vice chairman of a gang, adopting a more menacing appearance. One day, he's summoned by Maggie, the most infamous figure in the Polish criminal underworld. In Maggie's presence, Thomas suggests a plan to rob the entire salary of postal office employees, totaling 1.5 million zloty. Furthermore, he requests his boss to deploy five armed squads for the operation. Maggie promptly agrees, as long as this mission is led by Crowbar, an expert in robbery. The following day, Thomas summons Crowbar to a gym to strategize the heist, also involving his brother, Crowbutt. Without delay, Thomas calls his henchmen and delegates the strategic planning to Crowbar. After the planning session, Crowbar instructs Thomas and Crowbutt to get weapons in Poland, However, Thomas, as the vice chairman of the Mafia, refuses to undertake the task himself, especially since Krabat tends to talk excessively. Instead, he assigns Krabat to retrieve the weapons alone. Growing impatient while waiting for the weapons, Thomas fills his time by beating up the local gangsters. Not long after, the robbery operation begins. After wearing masks and dressed in all-black attire, they swiftly intercept the money transporter. Later that night, Thomas celebrates his success by indulging in drinks at a nightclub. Soon after, a waiter approaches him, revealing himself as Walden, who had witnessed Thomas's violent actions 12 years earlier. Walden then expresses his desire to become a gangster like Thomas. Several days later, the police raid Thomas's house and arrest him, not for the robbery, but for his involvement in fights with gangsters. As a result, he receives an 18-month prison sentence. Meanwhile, Maggi, Crowbar, and the other accomplices in the robbery are also apprehended and sentenced to seven years in prison with an additional 18 months. As time goes by, Thomas is finally released from prison. Upon his release, he sets out to establish his own gang. His first step is to visit a dog breeding facility, where he adopts a disabled puppy with the belief that raising it will foster lifelong loyalty as a common belief in Poland. Next, he encounters Walden and extends an invitation to join his new gang. While walking together, Thomas is suddenly confronted by apparent gangsters. To Thomas's surprise, Walden comes to his defense, displaying remarkable bravery. However, it turns out that the incident was just a test to assess Walden's loyalty. And all those gangsters were Thomas's henchmen. Thanks to his bravery, Walden passes the test and solidifying his place in Thomas's criminal gang, which now includes Walden, Crater, Thousand, and Gollum. Not long after, they formulate a plan to steal an expensive painting. Waste no time, they swiftly break into the home of the wealthy individual who possesses the painting. 
However, in the midst of the heist, Thomas becomes captivated by a photograph of a beautiful woman. In addition to stealing the painting, he also takes the photograph. The following day, Thomas sets out to learn more about the woman in the photograph, named Magda, who is a student at a nearby university. Fall in love with her, Thomas decides to pose as a student himself to meet her. During class, he is captivated by Magda's beauty, which enrages the professor, prompting him to test Thomas's knowledge. Being unfamiliar with academic subjects, Thomas answers randomly. Upon returning from campus, he encounters Krawat, who was expected to be imprisoned for seven years. Thomas then begins to suspect that Krawat was the one who reported his robbery, leading to a confrontation where Thomas pushes him into a pile of garbage. Later that night, Thomas and Walden visit a bar where Magda is present with another man. In a bid to create an opportunity to speak with Magda, Thomas discreetly takes the man's wallet. When the man discovers Thomas's actions and tries to intervene, Walden intervenes and issues a threat. With Walden's assistance, Thomas manages to spend time with Magda while playing billiards. Magda then grows curious about Thomas's occupation, given his wealthy appearance. Despite this, Thomas fabricates a story, portraying himself as a prosperous businessman with a grand house and garden. However, Magda remains skeptical. In response, Thomas employs all his charm to win her over, eventually melting her reservations and earning an invitation to her home. Returning from Magda's place the next day, Thomas is intercepted and assaulted by Kraubut and his henchmen. Escaping the attack, Thomas mobilizes his own men to retaliate and exact vengeance upon Kraubut and his henchmen. Seeking information on Kraubut's whereabouts, Thomas interrogates one of his associates, but is dissatisfied with the answers. Just as he's about to resort to more drastic measures, Magda calls, expressing a desire to visit his supposed home. Using this as motivation, Thomas rushes to find a suitable residence with a garden to maintain his lie. After an extensive search, he locates a mansion belonging to a wealthy individual that fits the bill. From that day onward, Thomas and Magda decide to live together in the house until 2003, during which time Thomas ascends to the position of a significantly more successful gangster boss. Naturally, Thomas continues to conceal his true occupation from Magda and her parents. One evening, as he prepares for dinner with his family, Walden pays him a visit, with a crucial information about Krawbut's whereabouts. Impressed by Walden's contribution, Thomas rewards him with his luxurious apartment. Following the family meal, Thomas's parents, unaware of his criminal activities, express sympathy for his financial struggles. In a gesture of support, his father gifts him a taxi to supplement his income. However, Thomas exploits the vehicle for criminal operations, including capturing Kraubut, who has been in hiding. Upon capturing Kraubut's henchmen, Thomas assigns Walden to conduct the interrogation. With the addition of a new member to their group, Walden orders the henchmen's torture to extract information about Kraubut's location. But their efforts are interrupted by the arrival of a police officer. Nonetheless, the henchman deceives the officer by claiming he was merely playing with Thomas, prompting Thomas to commend his quick thinking and immediately orders him to leave. One day, Thomas is visited by Marion, a friend who has recently been released from prison following a robbery. Marion then offers Thomas a job with a salary of half a million zloty. Intrigued, Thomas invites Walden to visit Marion's headquarters. There, the mafia instructs their henchman, Asset, to explain the job to Thomas. It turns out they plan to rob a wealthy cattle breeder. However, Thomas backs out of the collaboration upon learning Asset's intention to kidnap the cattle farmer's child as bait. Despite being involved in crime, Thomas adheres to his principles. Meanwhile, Walden is disappointed by Thomas' decision and urges his boss to work with Marion. Nevertheless, Thomas refuses to compromise his principles and insists on never involving children in his activities. After some advice, Walden eventually accepts this and lets go of his anger. Later, during the painting heist, Thomas mentions his upcoming marriage to Magda and expresses his desire to give the painting as a gift at the wedding. This news also brings joy to his henchmen as well. Not long after, the long-awaited day arrives for Thomas. As he prepares for his wedding, he receives a surprise gift from Walden, which turns out to be Krabut. 
After the wedding ceremony, Thomas and his henchmen take Krabat to an empty building where they interrogate him. Krabat then confesses that he only intended to intimidate Thomas into cooperating in business. Despite this seemingly minor offense, Thomas cannot forgive him. Without hesitation, he swiftly killed him. Later that evening, Thomas hosts a feast for all the wedding guests in his backyard, and he feels grateful for his beautiful wife and loyal henchmen. While Thomas enjoys increasing success, Marion faces trouble within his own gang, leading to chaos. Meanwhile, Thomas goes on vacation to the beach with Magda, Walden, and Walden's partner. During this time, Walden's partner questions Magda about Thomas's sudden wealth, given his job as a taxi driver. Magda then remains silent, reflecting on the question and beginning to suspect her husband's occupation. One night, Thomas and Walden attempt to go to a club for drinks, but are denied entry because of their formal shoes. Thomas redirects them elsewhere, leaving Walden disappointed with his decision. He notices a change in his boss after marriage, and upon hearing Walden's observation, Thomas's long-lost anger surges back. Thomas swiftly becomes merciless, much to Walden's delight. Following the fight, Thomas receives a call from a Mafia figure seeking collaboration. The next day, Thomas ventures to a bookstore in the city center, which serves as the Mafia's base of operations. Shortly after arriving, he is invited in to meet the Mafia leader, Daniel. Thomas is somewhat taken aback by Daniel's appearance. During their meeting, Daniel reveals that he is working with the police to eliminate gangs that disrupt Poland's stability. With numerous gangs causing havoc and offering no benefits to the government, Daniel explains that the Mafia remains untouched due to their bribery of the officials. Daniel proposes that Thomas join forces to rid the city of troublesome gangs, offering a substantial payment. Without hesitation, Thomas accepts the proposition and mobilizes his henchmen to eliminate the gangsters. Thomas and his henchmen have swiftly dispatched numerous gangsters, yet Walden expresses dissatisfaction, suggesting they eliminate Daniel to seize control of the business. But Thomas, disappointed by Walden's greed, remains silent. As he prepares to leave, a policeman approaches Thomas, seeking cooperation. The officer requests information about a gang named Loonies, but Thomas declines, following to his principle of not betraying other gangs. Meanwhile, Magda searches for canned sardines in the kitchen, but stumbles upon a suitcase on top of the wardrobe. She opens it to find a substantial amount of money, surprising her as she had believed her husband was merely a taxi driver. Upon Thomas's return home, he discovers his suitcase in the garage, prompting a discussion with his wife about the discovery. However, Magda avoids the topic, leaving Thomas puzzled. On the other hand, Daniel is highly impressed with Thomas and his gang's performance. At the same time, he summons Thomas back to headquarters to assign two additional missions. Thomas is tasked with eliminating the Lunas gang and overseeing the shipment of 500 kilograms of drugs. If successful, Daniel promises to retire and pass on the Mafia leadership to Thomas. However, Thomas doesn't immediately accept the offer. Upon returning from Daniel's headquarters, Thomas is startled by the arrival of his henchmen, who bring along Walden, already injured and covered in blood. Unaware of the situation, Magda calmly retreats to her room. Meanwhile, Thomas directs his henchmen to tend to Walden's wounds. Once treated, Thomas inquires about what happened. Walden then reveals that he was shot by the police during a criminal act and warns Thomas to prepare as the police will likely come after him too. The following day, Thomas decides to pass the time leisurely reading a book while anticipating the police's arrival. However, to his surprise, he gets arrested. Not due to Walden's actions, but because an Egyptian god statue left by the previous homeowner in his house was stolen from the Cairo Museum. Upon entering his cell, Thomas encounters cynical stares from the inmates. Reacting swiftly, he defeats the cell's leader. Since that day, he officially becomes the new ruler, and no one dares to disturb him. Two months later, Walden pays him a visit. Before their meeting, a guard, sent by Daniel, delivers a message urging Thomas to dissuade Walden from meddling in his affairs. In the visitation room, Thomas is taken aback by Walden's newfound arrogance. Thomas advises Walden to take a break from gangster activities and distance himself from Daniel's business. 
However, Walden disregards his words and declares his intention to steal the Mafia's drugs instead. Determined to halt Walden's plans, Thomas devises a plan to escape from prison. He then instructs Gollum to contact the original homeowners of his purchased house. Without delay, Gollum compensates both homeowners to testify in court, claiming ownership of the Egyptian statue found there. Not long after, Thomas was declared innocent and released from prison, where he was joyfully welcomed by Magda, who revealed she was four months pregnant. However, his return came after Walden had already initiated his plan by assassinating Daniel's henchman with a sniper, narrowly missing Daniel himself. Fearing for his safety, Daniel summoned Thomas to his headquarters. There, Daniel's mafia had captured and tortured one of Walden's henchmen. Thomas then swiftly executed the henchman with a pistol, vowing to deal with Walden personally. Without delay, Thomas began gathering information on Walden's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Daniel dispatched a member of his organization to monitor Thomas's movements. At the same time, Walden indulged in alcohol at a hotel. That night, Thomas confronted a sit, aiming his gun and demanding information about Walden's location. Asit, gripped by fear, disclosed Walden's whereabouts. With the information obtained, Thomas made the decision to eliminate Asit. Shortly after, Thomas arrived at the location provided by Asit and swiftly dispatched Walden's two companions. Despite Thomas's attempts to persuade him to revert to his former self, Walden's ambition and abandonment of his principles made reconciliation impossible. Forced into action, Thomas had no choice but to eliminate Walden. At the same time, Daniel arrived to escort Thomas to complete the delayed mission to securing a shipment of 500 kilograms of drugs. After a journey, they reached a container filled with drugs, only to find it surrounded by police. They fled into hiding, with Thomas visibly enraged, feeling betrayed by Daniel and suspecting a setup to kill him. However, Daniel remained silent in response to Thomas's suspicions. Soon after, black smoke appeared in the sky, prompting Daniel to panic and inspect his drugs. Meanwhile, Thomas, wearing a sly smile, ran in the opposite direction. It was revealed that Thomas had been deceiving Daniel all along, and he had only pretended to kill Walden. Not only deceiving Daniel, but Thomas also managed to steal all of his drug stock. While Daniel mourned the downfall of his business, Thomas approached his henchmen. He bid them farewell, expressing gratitude by giving them three large bags filled with drug packages. Following this, Thomas planned to depart the city by ship. Surpsingly, the ship's captain turned out to be his henchman, Crowbutt, whom he had spared from reporting to the police. Accompanying Thomas on the journey were Magda, Walden, and Walden's partner. After being away for some time, Walden regained consciousness on board. He was greatly surprised to find himself at sea and expressed a desire to return to Poland, still holding on to his dream of becoming a ruler there. Thomas, frustrated, pointed his pistol at Walden, prompting Walden to claim his unwavering loyalty. However, Walden revealed a disturbing truth that he had once killed a child to prevent them from reporting his gang's activities to the police. Upon hearing this, Thomas was overwhelmed with guilt and disgust, leading him to vomit. In a desperate response, Walden chose to smoke methamphetamine and died on the spot. Thomas, along with Magda and Walden's partner, mourned Walden's death. From that moment, Thomas vowed to become a more compassionate gangster. Over 10 years later, Thomas found himself imprisoned once again. However, this time, he was incarcerated for destroying half a ton of drugs to prevent their distribution in Poland. Thomas took this drastic action because he didn't want the youth to have a bleak future. In addition to sacrificing himself for the greater good, he authored a book titled The White-Eyed Man which gained widespread attention in the country for revealing the corruption of all the Mafia groups in Poland. Moral lesson from the story, being a gangster may seem cool, but it will only bring problems, such as being arrested for stealing an Egyptian statue. Instead, remain a person who follows your own principles and maybe reading a book can fill that free time.